Dear sir, I have received your letter of August 23rd. You note that there have been internal tensions in your administration. These tensions are a great concern to me. I wish that you should know the whole truth. I have never tried to convince members of the legislature to defeat the plans of the Secretary of Treasury. I value too highly their freedom of judgment. I admit that I have, in private conversations, disapproved of the system of the Secretary of Treasury. However, this is because his system stands against liberty and is designed to undermine and demolish the Republic. I would like for these tensions to fade away. And my respect for you is enough motivation to wait to express my thoughts until I am again a private citizen. At that point, however, I reserve the right to write about the issues that concern the Republic. I will not let my retirement be ruined by the lies of a man who history, if history stoops to notice him, will remember a person who worked to destroy liberty. Still. I repeat that I hope I will not have to write such a thing. I trust that you know that I am not an enemy to the Republic, nor a waster of the country's money, nor a traitor, as Hamilton has written about me. In the meantime, I am with great and sincere affection and respect, dear sir, your most obedient and most humble servant, Thomas Jefferson. Dear Sir, I have received your letter of August 26th. I sincerely regret that you have been made to feel uneasy in your administration. I will do anything to smooth the path of your administration and heal the differences, though I consider myself the deeply injured party. I know that I have been an object of total opposition from Mr. Jefferson. I also know from the most authentic sources that I have been the frequent subject of most unkind whispers by him. I have watched a party form in the legislature with the single purpose of opposing me. I believe from all the evidence I possess that the National Gazette was instituted by Mr. Jefferson for political purposes, with its main purpose to oppose me and my department. Nevertheless, I can truly say that besides explanations to confidential friends, I have never directly or indirectly responded to these attacks until very recently. But when I saw that they were determined to oppose the banking system, which would ruin the credit and honor of the nation, I considered it my duty to resist their outrageous behavior. Nevertheless, I pledge my honor to you, sir, that if you shall form a plan to reunite the members of your administration, I will faithfully cooperate, and I will not directly or indirectly say or do a thing to cause a fight. I have the honor to remain, sir, your most obedient and humble servant, Alexander Hamilton. Mr. Hamilton, I hear that it is your opinion that the people of this great nation do not have the intelligence to run themselves. You are absolutely correct, Mr. Jefferson. The common man does not have the experience or the capability to make decisions that are necessary for the government to be successful. Gone is the day where the common man will make choices that are good for everybody, including themselves. People are much more selfish now. When choices come upon them, they are going to automatically go with what benefits them best without the regard for the country. When we're making decisions for the country, we must have a strong central government where people are trained and have the experience to make the best decisions for the country without thinking of themselves first. You say gone are the days when people will do what is right. They are only interested in what is good for them at that moment, and they are only concerned with their own issues. I say you are right, sir, that there are people among this country that will do that, which is why a weak central government is what this country needs. If you put a strong central government in place, you will have the people at the top in charge of all of that power doing what they think is right for them, not this entire country, when this country was founded for the people, by the people. So Mr. Jefferson, was it not the Articles of Confederation that had a weak central government and failed miserably? We should move past our mistakes and change things so we don't fall in those same traps. We need a strong central government, one that can use the
Constitution to make better decisions. For example, we should create a bank, a national bank, the bank that will keep and store the nation's money, a bank that will offer loans and opportunities for people to create their own businesses. We need a bank that can print their own currency. Currently, we have money that's printed by every state. We need a consistent currency across the whole nation. Only a national bank can do that. You want to create a national bank, and I say I have read the Constitution, sir. You should have as well, and I see nowhere in the Constitution that gives you the power to create a national bank. A bank is not the answer. A bank is a way to get the common people more broke, more poor, and get you and your fancy bankers in New York more money in your pocket. Oh, I fail okay. to see how this the, helps. The Constitution very much so says that we can create a national bank. There is a clause called the Necessary and Proper Clause, or otherwise known as the Elastic Clause. It says Congress ha has the power to make all laws that will benefit the country. It doesn't say specifically, you can create a national bank. Because if it did that, if we had to write down everything in the Constitution word for word and have this strict constitutional view, we would have the longest document on the face of the planet. We need to have a loose construction view of the Constitution so that we can use those words in the document to bend it a little bit so that we can make choices and create things like the National Bank that will most benefit our country. Your loose construction view of the Constitution is one of the first ways that this government will be corrupted because you are taking liberties that you do not have. A strict construction view clearly states that if it is not written in the Constitution, you do not have that power. Why should you and a select few have the power to decide what is necessary and proper? Oh, what please. is proper for you may not be proper for this entire country. Keep in mind, I am the Secretary of the Treasury, so I have the best advice for money in our country and the economics. If a bank is going to help fuel our economy, then we need it. And you proclaim that a weak central government is best. But, in the same time, you have publicly said many, many times that a strong central government is needed for foreign affairs. Well, Mr. Jefferson, you can't have it both ways. You can't have a strong central government for foreign affairs and a weak central government for everything else. It doesn't work that way. You have to pick and choose. We need a strong central government. Well, I'll agree that we do need a strong government in the eyes of other countries. That is only because the common everyday man does not know the inners and outers of every other country in this world that we deal with. However, the American citizens do know what is best for their country and should have the power to run it as they see fit. And we I'm sure you're thinking this old school farming way of economy is the way to do it. Well, it's not. We can't rely only on farming anymore. You have to get out of this southern farming mentality and advance. We have to change. We have to include business. We have to include commerce and get manufacturing and industry. People in the north can't farm. The land is not good for farming. They can't sustain the economy without incorporating businesses. And in order to do that, they need a bank that will offer loans to get them started. You have to move forward, Mr. Jefferson. I am moving this country place. forward. This country was founded on farming. What has worked? Farming has worked. Our agriculture is what is making this country money. Why on earth would we take something that is working and making money and make a gamble on something that may not work with your fancy doodads and gizmos up north that you want me to buy? Get out in the field, do your hard work, and this country will prosper. That is what this country was founded on. Mr. Jefferson, you have this narrow-minded view of the world. You come from this rich, wealthy, farming mentality in Virginia. You know nothing else other than wealth. I have seen both sides. I grew up in a poor family. It wasn't until I married that I came into wealth. I live in New York and I see both sides. I see people that can't make enough money to feed their families. They don't have jobs. They can't farm like those of you in the South where you're making all kinds of money. We cannot have a United Nation that is successful economically, financially, without having a diversified economy. The only way to do that is to include manufacturing and business. We have to move forward, Mr. Jefferson. Sir, you have married into money. That means you do not have the longevity to view if you can sustain that money. Where myself, I have grew up with money. I still have money. I have had money because of, in, not your industry, but because of my agricultural skills. 
So while you say we must move to an industry, I solely disagree. And you talk about being a one united country. However, I hear that you are trying to impose a tariff, that is a tax, on imported goods. And those tariffs are going to help our country. If we have taxes on imported goods, people are more likely to pay for products that we create, keeping our money in our own country. They're less likely to pay more money to another country. But it's sir, that only money. helps the northern manufacturers, whereas southern farmers, the backbone of this country, now have to pay more for an item only so that northern businesses can prosper and make money. So you are making money off the backs of the farmers. Oh, Mr. Jefferson, you must understand that we are one nation, one country. It is called the United States of America. It is not called each individual state in the country we're going to pretend is a union. We have to be one. We have to take things like our debt. All of the debt that is owed by each state, we need to consolidate it into one lump sum so that we as a nation can move forward together, we can pay our debt off together, we can fuel our economy and grow as a nation, not individual states against each other. Sir, I will not pay back your debt just because you cannot afford to pay your own. The southern states have paid off their debt. Why should we also pay off yours so you can sit in your houses and do nothing while we slave all day? No, sir, I say no. We have paid off our debt and how like you ask? By the very industry you wish to turn your back to, the farming industry. Now you turn to an industry that has yet to make you money and you want the government to spend more money on it. You want this national bank to come in and give more money to people to make businesses. Why? So the southern farmers can pay for them too? Sir, I say no. Mr. Jefferson, you are a simple-minded farming fool. We need a strong central government. We need to move forward with our economy. We need to create businesses and manufacturing, industry. We need to get rid of this old way of viewing things that farming is going to carry us into the next century. It's not going to, nor will it ever keep us a union. You're delusional. Sir, the fact that you think that a strong central government is what these people want, you have forgotten what we have fought against, which is a strong government taking over power. These people do not want that. They do not need that. A bank is merely a convenience for you and your rich friends. It is not a necessity. It is not the proper thing to do. All you want to do is make your pockets deeper, yourself richer, and also your friends. The tariff will do nothing to help the southern people. The tariff will only help the northerners. Sir, you are talking like a hog I need to take out to the pasture. Clearly, Mr. Jefferson, there is nothing that is going to get through that narrow-minded skull of yours. So really, the only thing I conclude by saying is that I'm on the $10 bill, you're on the nickel, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> well, sir, that might be true. I will become president, and you will die. Well, <laughs> you are the one that's a closet slave owner, even after emancipation. So? <laughs> <laughs> so.